definition. Welcome back to Minimal Mystic and on our houseboat remodel. Yep, so over the past couple of weeks, we've uh, we took another break. We decided to go out on the Chattahoochee shoot the hooch with our buddy James. I mean, we went it's summer. Rafting. It's summer, so it's got to do some sun spin. Yeah. It's hot. So we decided to take another break this weekend with our buddy James. And uh, we're shooting the hooch. We're going down the Chattahoochee on some rafts. Gonna have a fun time. It's another break day, mainly because can't really do anything. We're in the process of uh, designing our built-ins. So we've got some SketchUp stuff to do. But uh, right now we're just gonna take this nice relaxing float down the Chattahoochee. Look at that smoke. Isn't that so cool? The water is freezing by the way. It's like 50 degrees. My toes are like turning to ice. But uh, yeah, so that's what we did last weekend. So we took a little bit of a break. We still did some work, but we took a little bit of a break and did that. Fly. And then we started doing like the built uh, built in stuff uh, in SketchUp. So I sketched it up and like 3D modeled it. That way we could see basically exactly what our measurements are gonna be for each cut, which turned out pretty accurate. Pretty, pretty spot on. We, we altered it little bit by uh, yeah because we had to work within the space and the walls aren't plumb like no. it's a boat uh it's nothing's they're not ever, plumb. nothing's ever going to be level and they're not level right because we're on water you can't use a, a level on water it doesn't work it's hard. so we had to tweak the the measurements just a hair but for the most part went in perfectly so, um and we hope to finish the what the remainder of that today the basic frame And then we actually started building the frame too. So we got a lot of that done. Um, we've kind of stopped at the point where the frame itself is built. Now we have to like figure out the slats and the cushions because we need it. We want it to be on a hinge um, so we can lift it up and access storage. the storage. Ooh, the boat's rocking, the camera is like swaying on the tripod. Uh, we want to be able to lift it up so we can access it for storage. And then the slats are going to come out to make a bed and we just want to make it we want to make the lines as clean and even as possible, and then we have to calculate the cushions because we don't want we want we don't want cushions that are just like stored under somewhere. We want to be able to use all of the cushions to kind of and make have it evenly make the bed, but also kind of like have it where it's like tightly in there, so it's not you lay on it and it starts sliding off. <laughs> what you doing? I'm spackling up the seam right here the floor is a little uneven but i'm spackling up this seam right here because we're about to put the built-in in or at least the framing for the built-in in and i'm not going to be able to access this again after i do that so i want to get the spackle in there now that way it's all nice and set and filled in not that anybody's ever going to see it, but I'll know it's there. Mm -hmm. yeah, that should be the top of the... Cushion. You counted from the bottom of this, right? Like, well, I, since this is the top of the 2 back 4 no, the line is where the top of the 2 by 4 would be. You just, you just had this up here and this is the top of the 2 Right here, where we drew the line is where the top of the 2 by 4 is. So what we got going on here is we're trying to figure out the dimensions for our built-in seating that's happening in this space here. So like, we tried measuring it out. We got some uh, blue painter's tape. Um, the bottom of this line represents the bottom of the, uh, I guess, two by four. The two by four is, I guess, it's to be like the bare bottom before a cushion uh, gets on. And we're thinking we're doing like three inch cushion depth. And so the top of this line right here would represent the very top of the cushion. So the bench with cushion all should be up to this line. And we actually had this table that came with the boat that was outside, it's very sturdy. 
um, is actually uh, you know close enough to give us an idea of the actual you know seat and and the tread depth too of it is how much yeah. we're gonna have with the cushion back. Mm -hmm. So you can think of it like there's gonna be a three inch cushion back here, but just uh, imagine that this is the cushion, the back is the cushion, because it, it, it'll actually go three inches. Mm -hmm. um, so just to represent a cushion, and but sitting here, I mean, it works. My feet can be flat on the ground. Um, and, and most people like in couches or anyway, they always have like clothes behind their back regardless. And I mean, this will work. This is pretty comfortable. And I guess we'll be doing this all the way around. And I think we still have a little bit more work to do probably on the uh, filler cushions because this is, because technically this whole thing is gonna be separated into two parts. Essentially, like we're gonna have the L, we have the sectional here, a built-in that's gonna go out there for extra like, storage in the corner, and the love seat, which should seat two people right here that is going to be hinged and lift up to gain access to the cutty. And so over here, this is we're just raising up the outlet, and we're thinking maybe of doing like separating this into the two storage spaces where the top part is be like a, a tray-ish kind of style where you can lift up and you can put like pillows or anything in there and then that sh should be like about this deep-ish, something right around there. And then the space underneath here is gonna be storage uh, for the cutty. So that way you can throw anything all up under here and it'll also be connected to the back of this. I find being at the hardware store very relaxing as well. So we just got some woods for the build of the Yeager. We have a little guest with us today. Oh, you're getting so comfy, but I need to start driving soon. Um, so we got woods to start with the built-in seating benches in the living room. It's probably really loud in here. Okay, so we got the wood for the built-in seating benches in the living room. Uh, I believe Taylor did a video already of showing the mock-up for it. Uh, we used Google SketchUp, we used the free version, and it's a fantastic tool. It's a little bit of a learning curve, but it's a fantastic tool to kind of mock up what you want to build so that way you can kind of figure out the exact dimensions to see if it works so that way you know exactly how much material and the cuts you make so um did, would you say it was a really invaluable tool for this so good pre previs stuff so the, hopefully this will go pretty easy quickly we got some stuff to kind of assemble it so i'm not sure really how far we're going to get today but um we'll just have to see and for this guy there's a plan for this guy should i uh -oh. do you want me to talk about it or yeah Okay, so we have a friend um, who has two chihuahuas, um, and uh, I know that he breeds them, and I think he sells them. So he was thrilled to find out, oh wait, you have a chihuahua? It's male? <laughs> and he's not neutered? So um, he's like, when they're in heat, I'll let you know, and I guess now is the time, so we're gonna sluice you out. <laughs> and maybe, maybe we're not sure yet, we might get a little another puppy like we need more <laughs> we already have four what is one more maybe don't know but it'd be interesting to see what kind of spawn you make
mystic and and i believe in our last episode we talked a little bit about the mystic part so we're going to be doing a little bit more of that in as you remember in our previous episode we kind of wrote affirmations inside the walls for prosperity and stuff like that well now we're going to do it again with the bench uh, the bench seating here so i'm just going to write a little affirmation i'm a lefty we're both lefties by the way so we're awesome um might be hard to see, but I'll show you in a second. It's like, may all who sit here feel welcome. Terrible handwriting. And then this one should be the night's rest, because this is where the headboard is, basically. I like that, yeah. Master. Have the best night's rest. We should sign it. We should. Where should we sign it? On the piece under the window. And in the meantime, Yeah, well, what else? So, may all who sit here be alone. May all who sleep here have the blessed night's rest. Magic! Minimal Mystic, brought to you by Smeared Off, for a hard day's work. I'm just kidding. Um, Please send us more. So, what? I was like, uh, I said, please send us more. Please send us more. Please send us some. Um, so we're today working on the built-in again. And uh, I know it seems a little bit backwards to be doing it the way that we're doing it, but we can't build it outside and then bring it in and slide it into place. Ideally, that would be the way to do it, but we can't do that because we don't have the space to do that. And then the other thing, the other two things is, is moats aren't exactly plumb. Like the walls, they're curved. They're, they're, they're not exactly square. They have shapes. Also we're on water, so there's no leveling. So we kind of just have to work within the confines of what we're able to do. So we're basing pretty much everything off of this wall. That's why we put this board right here on the floor. Because we're basing everything off of this wall. This is going to be our wall that we're going to use to square everything up off of. So, even if this wall is not entirely straight, at least everything is going to be crooked in relation to this wall. That's all I could really say, how I could say that. So we're building out different pieces of the frame and then we're connecting them all together. And then we're going to encapsulate it with like with like cedar. This is cedar. This is cedar. So we're going to kind of make it like a built-in cedar chest. That's pretty much what we're doing. And I, I kind of like that because cedar, for those of you who don't know, 
is mold and rot resistant, uh, water resistant and pet re resistant. It's very good material, especially in a boat. Um, and boats have naturally with them pests, spiders, they love boats. Chihuahuas love boats. Boats. So far, this little thing, this little pocket screw um, jig, is a solid investment. I'm actually really pleased with with this investment. It's one of the few things that we bought that like works exactly as described, and it's very easy to use. And it's kind of like a dummy could do it. I know I probably shouldn't be doing this on my knee but I've already checked, it doesn't go all the way through. Also, I don't have a nice, smooth work surface to do this on, so you just gotta work with what you got. We do a lot of dangerous things on the show, just so you know, a lot of dangerous things. And uh, as a private citizen, we can, because we don't have to deal with OSHA. I mean, it makes a mess, but uh, perfect little pocket holes. And we've used them a couple of times, and it really, it really helps to clean up the edges right here. Used it on this one, and uh, it's nice and sturdy. We're gonna use it a couple more times, um, especially on the show facing side of this stuff. This is getting covered up, so I didn't really care about this side too much because this is getting covered up with um, some glue on. But these sides are going to be visible and they're going to be outward facing. So these sides I want it to look nice. Coming together. take the clamp off and let it fold because it's yeah let it pull it together there you go there we go good yeah it's nice and straight now it is freaking hot today but so what we're doing here is we're going to be doing some more flooring and this is going to be underneath the um built-in what do you say coffee table end table kind of thing yeah. Because um, this will be, you'll be seeing this. As well, you'll be seeing it from the cutting. You'll be seeing it from the cutting. So those that go down into the cutting, this will be open to them for like storage or what have you. So we want this to look pretty. So we already kind of cut these, like these aren't down yet. They're just kind of dry fitted. So this little end piece is kind of the weird one. So hopefully we cut it right. And I think we measured it pretty damn good. Yeah, I mean, look at that's, that. That's snug. That's pretty good. I like that. So, yeah, so there's going to be a bar that's going to go across here, which will divide the two sections. And then um, for the remainder of this uh, end table thing, 
from like what here up is going to be storage for like what you can reach yeah, down very storage. Little storage very little it's just it's going to be like just an extra spot it's going to be like one of those little end tables that you stick your finger in it and pull the top off yeah so just whatever have you just storage because this boat doesn't have any uh, I'm just the one that gets trouble. Uh -oh, it's the next one. Okay, well, yes. You're right there. What's the matter? Because you may be shorter, but I still have to do all this climbing into the tight spaces with bad back, carpal tunnel, arthritis. I'm shorter, but I'm rounder. <sighs> oh. At least. It almost looked like an interpretive dance there. <laughs> At least like this should be pretty good for like one adult and then it's fully slid out should be two adults and this will be all storage so um this one's gonna be self-contained we're gonna do a built-in uh, possibly a bookcase so that might come out it's about like here and we're leaving this open maybe taking a little dog or dog bed for our littlest dog be a nice little built-in feature or could be used for whatever and, and then we have a common bed <laughs> And then uh, the idea is to have, once we build the slats, is to like hinge it up so we gain access. So all this is gonna be storage. Like this will be completely, uh, you know, we just slide things under so you won't be able to gain access to the top. It'll just be like sliding in, like you need more long-term storage, maybe like winter clothes or whatever have you. And then this easy access kind of stuff where you can just kind of grab and go. Maybe like this can also be like, I don't know, the pillows or whatever for the bed or, I don't know. Um, and then, that, as we mentioned previously, is going to be self-contained in the bottom portion is the access from the cuddy, and there's going to be a little bit of storage on the top where we access it from the top. Um, the bed, couch thing is coming together. We just, uh, what, the reason why I was stuck is because I had to screw in these rails. Um, so this is where we have, a, we have a piece to demonstrate, please. No? Where do the pieces go? Right there. Oh. <laughs> This may not be a good demonstration because I don't think this is long enough, but so what's going to happen is this, there's going to be a piece here that's going to be hinged so that way it can kind of hinge up, but then there's going to be another piece like this in front of that one that's going to be attached to those slats and this will kind of slide along until it gets there and that should extend it all the way out. And this will be run all the way across, so it will come across here, and uh, yeah. should be pretty cool when it's all done. Excited. You know when you think oh, you go into the store and you think you only need a few things, but then as you start walking down the aisles, you're like, give me! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we literally came here for hinges. Did we get hinges? Oh, we got hinges. So what we've got here for the back, because we're gonna be, all the planks are gonna be attached to this basically. And this is going to hinge up so we can like lift it. So we can lift it like a, 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 a chest. So what we've got is some piano hinges, which we're gonna use and attach to here so that we can lift it up. Okay. All right, we learned a valuable lesson today when it comes to pocket hole screws and the placement of them on the wood and how 
to install it. Luckily, everything else in this build, we put the pocket screws on the bottom. So it, on the bottom, so when you put weight onto it, it will um, hold. This piece, the only piece, it was installed this way. And when weight was applied, it broke. So um, lesson learned, if you're doing pocket hole screws, have them like on the bottom. So after a bit of finagling, we, uh, we got it to work. So we've got a nice little piano hinge on here that'll allow us to, it's actually going to lift like that, but uh, it'll allow us to lift our Show them up. how the wood is going to look like on top of it. Well, anyway, so it'll be attached like this, and then it's just going to hinge up just like that. What you doing? I don't want to do I feel like I'm going to flip over if I try. Try. I don't want to. Help. I'm gonna be filming. You filmed me in a situation that's my turn. You know mine was more difficult. Made it. So we were kind of finagling with trying to figure out spacing. It's the second time I've used that word finagling. Uh, trying to figure out spacing for these slats. And honestly, the best spacing that I was able to come up with because we were using like the flooring, the thickness of the flooring. We were trying to use the slats for spacing, and none of it was really quite working. But um, screws. So I put screws to use them as spacing. And not only that, not only does it use them as spacing, but it allows us to lay it out first. And then we can drill the holes in without worrying about these moving out of the way. So we can drill the pilot holes and then we can drill the screw down in it so we don't have to worry about these shifting while we're working. And it's working out great so far. I mean, it's nice and solid. We've labeled which ones are gonna be the slats um, to make sure that they don't, because the slats have to, the slats have to go up over the piano hinge as well, because the whole thing needs to lift up. So I had to round the end of the, the slats that are gonna be pulling out. I had to round the end of those, like sand them down so they could like, you know, where the bump is, so they could just smoothly kind of go like this over it because otherwise they'd be hitting it like that. So I rounded the edge of those, the regular ones that aren't gonna be sliding out, those ones are getting drilled right into that um, hinge. So they don't need to worry about it because they're not gonna be moving at all. But the other ones I kind of needed to round, sand the edges so they just kind of go up and over and uh, don't get stuck. The moment of truth, we made this slatted pullout sofa, couch, bed thing, and we've got it on hinges we got slats on sliders. We have not tested it yet. We just got done screwing everything in. So this is gonna be the first test to see, what are you pointing at that for? The one imperfect part, which you're gonna try and blame me for, it wasn't me. Just so y'all know, it wasn't me. It's just how it measured out, regardless. Anyway, first test is we're gonna lift it up and see if it hinges. We'll see. Oh, please work. So far, so good. So far, so good. Yay. Yay, one part down. Okay, next test. Yeah. To pull out the slats. One hand there, uh, one yeah, hand. I'm, I'm aware. I don't have this side built yet. Um, to kind of hold this right. but support we're gonna We're gonna pull it out. And, uh, we're gonna see what happens if it pulls out. It doesn't want to pull out. <laughs> okay, here we go. So far, so good. So far, so good. It's a little sticky, but. Yeah. And then. It where does it land? Stops. Right at the end, right where it should. And with that faceplate on, it'll be perfectly even. And this is a bed now. This is now a bed. I mean, it's a little sticky. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. We'll have to work on that. Well, I sanded it so it would go up nice and easy, but... Probably need to wax it. Yeah. But, uh... We'll refine it, but it slid out and it lifts up. So, uh, 
I'd say that it's a success. It's a successful day. You can sit on me. Well, it's not bad. It's fine. Everything else is supported the way it should be. So, uh, yeah. Look at us. And then we also uh, trimmed off the flooring that was in the cuddy cabin. So we've got a nice... I was really excited to finally get that yeah. done because we keep on stepping on the part that's overhanging. Right. Almost falling in. Almost falling in, breaking the floor. So. But now we've got a nice clean line there. So it looks, looks good. What I'm doing, we have to cut the remainder of this floor for the opening of the cuddy cabin. And I can't wait to do that because we keep thinking this is solid, but it's very flexy. So um, to kind of Right where this one was cut seems to be right in line with the hole, so we're gonna have to go all the way across, but I'm not sure if it's even. So I'm gonna take this drill bit, drill right in the corner, so we'll at least know where the corner point is for that we can kind of make our lines that way. And I can't wait to finally get this out of the way. So here is a nifty trick. If you are cutting wood of any kind, especially with like something like this, if you just uh, take the saw and you start cutting, it's gonna splinter. Like you can see how we just drilled through and how all the splintering has right happened. Say again. That end. Like right here. Okay. See how the splintering when we cut it? Well, we discovered a little nifty trick that if you lay down painter's tape over it, right where you're gonna cut, and then you cut along that, it will keep it from splintering and it'll give you a much nicer, cleaner cut. So we learned that the hard way. So passing the knowledge on to you. So you have a better job than we did. I hate this tool so much. I'm very bad with it. So we'll see what happens. Just don't take off a finger and it's a success. Um, but uh, another fun thing that we did is that we kind of pimped out our chihuahua. Because we, um, we have a friend who has two females. Right in the boat, right like, there. Almost like, almost directly like dressed his boat. across. We have a lot of friends and it's really yeah. nice when you just look out your window and you're like, oh, there's the back of our other friend, but we can just kind of wave and say, hi, oh, they're over there. My old roommate's boat is a few boats down. Hi, how you doing? You know, everyone, right. it's just nice to see that people can like watch out. Yeah, so anyway, he had uh, two female chihuahuas that are in heat and then ours is not neutered. He he's breeds, old though, he's he old. Them. Um, but we, so we, we picked up one of his females and brought him over here to the boat and uh, tried to Set get- the mood. Yeah, we lit some candles, played some like Barry Mallow. No, it didn't work though. Um, our chihuahua couldn't, couldn't figure it he out. He wanted it though. He, he wanted it. Even though at first he's like, I want nothing to do with it. Oh that. no, no, he was angry, but then he got a whiff of the pheromones and but nuts. He just couldn't figure it out. He couldn't figure out the mechanics. So, right. but um, that dog, since we got, as we mentioned before, we have four dogs, and he's the smallest. Yeah, we were the um, one he was most worried about bringing. Because he he's one so we're small, we were worried about him kind of like falling off. And, right. and he's injured. a curmudgeon -y old man too. So he's an old dog. We didn't know. We didn't know how he'd handle being but a dog. He turned out. He. We think he'll be doing just fine. Like he took to the boat Loved just it. fine. He likes a little. Cuddy cabin. He likes find his little corners and like his whole face. Just he's physically smiling. He, yeah, he literally had a smile on the whole time. You his could tail see was it. like just constantly wagging. Mm -hmm. He's off the leash, walking full of energy. You. Yeah, he was that. going up and down the docks, no problem. Look at him taking to the dock life like a fish takes the water. Run this way. Come on. That's not our boat. Come on, buddy. Come on. You're a happy guy. So that's the, those are the projects we've got going on. Obviously, the electrical is still a work in progress. We ordered some stuff uh, we, to get going. Well, we ordered like a, like kind of a small kit of electrical connectors, um, uh, the shrink um, shrink wrap. That's not shrink wrap. It's yep. the yeah, it's the the wrap that you apply heat to and it shrinks and applies a really good solid connection for the wires. We've got some of that. We've got crimpers. Got, connectors. got the crimpers. Um, we, we ordered the lights. We ordered the LED lights. We probably will do an unboxing 
of those. We also ordered um, a round LED light, which you can set the color temperature to. That'll be like the main AC light here. The small yeah, we've got the ones. DC lights, the small DC lights, the LEDs. And we've got the main um, AC lights for the front and the back that we've got ordered. And we're probably going to order the fridge and stove maybe yeah, fairly soon. We, I mean, I, it seems like it might we might be jumping the gun on that, but really we need to get them in here to to because we can't build the cabinetry unless we have the stove and the I mean, and we the have dimensions from online, but I don't trust they it. Don't really, I don't, don't yeah. want to work with that. We need to see how it fits too. in the space. And then we also can determine the, the draws. That yeah, because like uh, I'm focusing on DC first because that's what's going to run the entire panel. Um, we're pretty much doing everything from scratch. A, a lot of people are like, if it, if it works, don't touch it, but really nothing works right now. So we might as well just start over with that way we know things are done right. And we don't have to question if the buggy's going to burn up and we all die. Right. So, um, and we've decided finally on our AC, we're going to do a split. We're, yeah, we're going to try to do this we're um, do mini, a mini split. split. So that's getting the hole in the ceiling right there is getting closed up and the, 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 ma the mounted AC unit on top is coming off. So yeah, we're going to try the mini split, put it like along that wall. It should be okay. We measured it out. According to the dimensions online, it'll fit perfectly right there. And we, we were worried about the um, exterior unit because that can get kind of bulky and whatnot, but we kind of figured since we are removing the ladder to get up on the sun yeah, deck. We didn't talk about that. We're, we didn't talk we're, about that. No, we're relocating it. We're, we're, because uh, well, I know my mom, I want my mom to be able to come up here and she's not going to climb up a ladder. So we're going to put stairs along the side because yeah. we never use this side. Yeah, as far as right now, we don't never use this side. So we're thinking of putting the, like a stairway here, putting a little platform so that right. way, like so, aluminum, lightweight. So that way you can still walk around the entirety thing. So right. you feel like you have the stairs coming up, platform to get on, then you have stairs going down to go to the back. And by and that'll just make it nice and easy for people with bad knees or the dogs. And by removing the uh, the ladder back, it'll open it a little bit more space. Whole, for the back. Yeah, it opens up the whole back. So we're thinking of putting the exterior unit underneath that staircase. It'll be, right. it, it might cover up a window in the back. It's not going to cover up the window. You, it, you'll see it in the window, but it'll be it'll be fine. It'll be worth it. As long as split, it cools because it's hot. Well, the one that we're looking at is supposed to school is supposed to cool a space that's double this size. So I think we'll be fine. Right and uh, so as far as the electrical goes, um, oh, and we ordered gauges. Oh yeah, we got gauges. So that'll be for a new custom helm, and we'll probably do an unboxing and showing videos of that maybe. Um, so what what's gonna happen next is we need we got we bought the gauges to kind of figure out a new helm so we're, yeah. we're trying to figure out all the switches that we're going to need so you know all the basics you know like panel lights nav lights um engine blowers horn all that stuff we're going to figure all that out we're going to get a custom one made and it should be pretty pretty nice and swanky and the gauges we're probably going to build our own harness that's going to be running to the engine and hopefully that all works out and we want this to be i'm gonna be a little ocd i am ocd i'm gonna be definitely a perfectionist on this because the goal is if anything happens if any troubleshooting needs to happen it'll be nice to meet and organized and we'll know we can do it easily and if we just ever decide to sell in the future people can figure it out be like here's all our diagrams it's easy to follow and understand because if you have a boat that is like the electrical system is a clear indication of how well you care for a boat. Mm -hmm. So it's like if someone you're going to sell a boat and they come and see things are nice and easy, all the diagrams, then, then, then like it's easier to sell a boat if that's the case. So uh, that's my goal. So basically, this everything that's been going on the past couple of weekends on uh, Minimal Mystic. Stay with us. Join us next time subscribe. for the next video. Subscribe, share, like. Um, we have a Patreon. You get things. You get things if you sign Help up for us Patreon. finish this journey. Make our dreams come true. Peace. Hopefully they don't back into us. It's kind of intimidating to watch it. <laughs>